Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge, the Adam and Ro Show. I'm Adam, and Ro, are you there? Yes, how you doing, Adam? Really good, really good. Yeah, I've really enjoyed this week, uh, catching up on uh, Impact already, which is quite early for me. For regular listeners, they know that I tend to listen to this on, on a Sunday morning. Sorry, we record this on a Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, so I, I've actually had a, a chance to watch this week's Impact. Although we're not going to be talking about that specifically, I'm sure it will come up on this week's show. For the first time, stop us by. Uh, what we tend to do on the Adam and Rose show is have a look at this week's news. We set you a couple of uh, fun trivia questions to answer. And we also answer any comments or questions that have been asked to us uh, on the, the YouTube video. So uh, without further ado, we're going to dive into the trivia question. So last week, it was a, it was a simple question, but very, very hard. And in actual fact, we only had one person who got the right answer. So the question itself was, who um, who's had the most matches in TNA Impact history. Now, I, I say the most matches. We covered this last week. We all know that it's AJ Styles. So the actual question is referring to who's had the second and third most matches. Now, Ro, uh, you didn't get this when I asked you. And it's not surprising because I didn't know the answer. And looking at the people who answered this week, there was a really wide range of answers that were given. Um, so there was one right answer, and I'm just desperately flicking back through here just to try and find out who it was who got it right. But the correct answer was James Storm followed by Bobby Roode. Uh, they are the most matches, uh, respectively 195 and 194 matches. Now, I will say one thing. Looking at my source here, I'm not actually quite sure when this list was done. So it could have been that those figures have changed. But uh, looking at who's fourth, which was Chris Sabin, Samoa Joe and then Abyss on 149, some 50 uh, matches short of those two. I don't think he would have caught up by now. So well done to Richard Cartledge, who got it right. And he actually got uh, fourth position as well, I think, I believe. He um, he got, uh, I'm just having a look at this. No, it was Sporty Singer, 87, who came up with uh, Chris Saban as number four. So that was last week's question. And I think Roe is going to set this week. So over to you, Roe. Yeah, um, the common theme this week where a lot of people were talking about the type of mid-card championship that Impact should have. Um, from anything from, I've seen Gene Reynolds was talking about a uh, North American championship. So I'm guessing the common theme would probably be something like a Intercontinental US or hell, even television championship. Um, look... I think the concern is always going to be with me with this company. While I'm always going to be in favor of a mid card, for some reason they've always struggled to how to book a mid card uh, championship. And this goes back to the old regime when you think about the Legends title that went through so many different names, and then even uh, most recently the Grand Championship. So, I mean, I'm all for it. I think it's needed just because I just think with the X Division, there's too much. Um, technicality when you're talking about who can work an exhibition style match and who can't but you know they would just need to get behind it and then the other thing and um luke avery and as well as kobe cooper you know they were just pointing this out as far as the accomplishments of johnny impact by in no way i'm minimizing the stuff that johnny impact or any other wrestler does in various promotions I just a lot of times when I'm talking about reaching the top of the mountain, and this is highly debatable, but my three top companies, wrestling companies, I look at Impact, Ring of Honor, the E. Okay, whatever order you want to put them in, you might not think they're top, whatever. But I just think when you win world titles in one of those three companies, it carries more weight than, or, and I guess you can throw in New Japan too. Um, it carries more weight versus when you win them elsewhere and the only reason why and like i said this is just my own personal opinion you notice when a guy's or yeah or when a guy's won the world title in one of these promotions and they go somewhere else there that's all you know it's brought up whereas when they win them in other promotions that probably aren't as known they're not seen as a former world champion so i just want to just put that out there i'm not trying to minimize anybody's accomplishments it's just what i kind of go by fair enough Fair enough. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm going to come on to, to talking about something in the news about the mid-card title in a bit. But before we do that, let's get the trivia question out of the way for our regular listeners. And then uh, we'll dive into this week's news. Yes. OK, so the three clues. The first one, I've been a part of two 
innovative matches, which one not going down as anticipated, but the other one actually, I want to say, was relatively high, high rated when it initially aired and went over well. The second one is I was involved romantically with a former champion that uh, we ended up kidnapping in the end. And finally, one of my maneuvers costed me my championship. Who am I? Okay. Um, well, we haven't run this one past each other today, so I'll come up with my answer after we go off air there, bro. But I think I know this one. Right. So, yeah, first time stoppers by. You can answer the, the trivia question in the, the comment section below the YouTube video. And uh, we usually read out the people who get it right. And uh, certainly we always read out who gets it right first. So if you are listening, make sure you answer that as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, we'll give you either a thumbs up or, or read your name out next week. So uh, before we dive into this week's news, one thing I am going to say is we're going to try and have a little social media experiment a little bit later on. So Ro doesn't know what I'm talking about at the moment, but I will come back to this during the show. Uh, I like to throw a little curveball now and again at him. So uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, we need your help this week. So what we need from you is, is first of all, to follow us. But then when we get to the section that, that I want to talk about, uh, which is going to be this little experiment, uh, you obviously need to follow us on Twitter to make it happen. So, OK, uh, Ro, remind us again, what's your Twitter handle? RT great underscore. And mine is uh, obviously the at symbol, but it's V2. So the letter and the number V2, Adam and then IL for Impact Lounge. So V2 Adam IL. Right. So make sure you're following us. Let's get some of those followers up. And as I said, we are going to ask for your help a little bit later on on Twitter. OK, so let's dive into this week's news. First thing I want to bring up, uh, Austin Aries is still the most talked about thing in Impact Wrestling. And yet, who knows whether he is in Impact Wrestling. So what's happened this week? Well, there has been uh, a few things that we, we want to talk about. First of all, it's been reported by, why are we talking about Dave Meltzer? I don't know. But Dave Meltzer um, has shed some more light on the situation, apparently. And by throwing light on the situation, as he invariably does, it's full of backtracking during his comments and also probably and allegedly thrown in there. But I shall read out what uh, has actually been claimed by Dave Meltzer is effectively he Austin Aries has been suffering from a minor concussion. So that's the first thing. But also Meltzer noted that Austin Aries was at the first night of tapings uh, during the New York tapings. So he was there the night after Bound for Glory at uh, the Impact tapings, but was sent home and they had to rewrite his sections. So what Meltzer is, is kind of fanning the flames of here is that it is a work. Uh, what do you think, Ro? Do you think this is a work? Do you think that Aries was there? Uh, do you think it's been rewritten at the moment because of his concussion? Personally, I don't know. And... <laughs> I hate to say this, I'm probably on an island and that's okay, but I really don't care just because I don't see what the end game is in all of this. And it just goes back to, you know, how, what, what transpired at Bound for Glory. You know, if it is a work, what does it do? You think it's going to gain any more eyes on the product? If anything, I just remember coming out of Bound for Glory, it kind of, um, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It kind of just shed a light as far as who Austin Aries is, as far as his reputation. You know, while you had the bunch that were thinking that it was a work, a lot of people were like, well, you know, he's an ass and this and that. So I, I just don't see what, what what's the benefit in all of this. I mean, if he is hurt or dealing with a mild concussion, then that's one thing. But I, I just I don't know. I, I just I just find myself just like I really don't care whether it's a work or if it's a shoot. I mean, if it's a shoot, then good riddance. But if it's a work, I just don't see what's the benefit. Just just a couple of things to add to the actual batch itself is that, you know, I, I think it could be a work. Uh, and I'm beginning to think that it more and more likely is a work. But the, the only thing I don't like about it, if it is a work, he still shouldn't have no sold the Starship paint. Uh, or whatever it was, he should have at least given it another 10, 15 seconds before getting up or even acting a bit groggy. He could have still given the finger and those kind of things to Don Callis and swore. Um, but no selling the finish was, I suppose it gets us guessing a bit more, but I, I, I just don't think, I think he could have done a bit more to protect the business. Um, now, if he has got a concussion 
fair enough. You know, those kind of things. They're talking about Brian Pillman angle. What this, I think, will head towards is more along the lines of, if you remember when Matt Hardy invaded, I can't remember if it was SmackDown or Raw, to attack, uh, I'm guessing it would have been Edge at the time, during the whole Lita angle, those kind of things. And I think maybe you're going to find that, that he's going to start appearing at Impact shows and doing run-ins and those kind of things. But I think that's maybe the kind of vibe that they're going for. You know, the Pillman, the Brian Pillman, you know, that kind of worked angle where it looks like someone's running in, but actually it's all part of the, of, of the show. Now, the other thing that Austin Aries did this week, uh, well, yesterday, fair enough, just before we, uh, we recorded this, is that he tweeted a picture. And once again, you know, if you're on Twitter, go and have a look at this. Uh, it was a picture of him holding the grand championship and giving the finger. And uh, the actual title of the, the tweet, and all he put was uh, hashtag and still hashtag Austin Aries. So basically he's saying he's still got the grand championship belt. Screw you guys. Now, I, I tweeted this to Ro earlier on. So if you have our following us, you'll be able to see it anyway. But what did you make of this? Do you think this is all still part of it? Or do you think he's genuinely pissed? Now, that would be an interesting way to bring him back. And you'd be killing two birds with one stone. You could, uh, you know, have him come back, declare himself as champion, and just kind of dismiss what happened at Bound for Glory. He also was tweeting uh, throughout the week uh, negative tweets that he had received, I guess, post Bound for Glory. And, you know, people were, you know, laughing at that. And, you know, because you got some people on Twitter that they don't have anything better to do than to attack people. But, you know, I, I don't know. Like with that, like I said, they they could be killing two birds with one stone. You can bring him back and then you could bring back a mid card title. And then there you go. But like I said, I just don't know. I just kind of just wonder. I just find myself just for me, you know, him coming back. If all this is a work, I just don't see what what's benefited from it. Did it help in ratings? Did it get more eyes on the product? What did it do? I just I, I just don't think it went over as well. Like you were saying, I think him no selling the finish is what kind of hurt everything i think if you would have had him kind of sell it for a little bit then maybe roll out the ring and cussing everybody out i think that would have been different but to me that that's what kind of just bothered me because i just thought that was a big moment for johnny impact and you know you just kind of crapped on it yeah absolutely so we'll see anyway but but um what i do want to talk about is that he has got the grand championship belt and you said it has it had an impact. Sorry, going back to the, the whole situation. You talked about ratings. We'll come on to that in a minute because obviously impact hit a new low this week. Uh, but I didn't want to lead with that this week because there's, there's more to talk about. But we talked about the Grand Championship. And that is a belt that theoretically could come back. Although, um, was it retire? Did he retire it? Was it just never mentioned? I can't remember. They merged uh, how it. did they write it off? I'm sorry. They, they merged it. Yeah, they merged it. Yeah, so, you know, that's one way of getting back into uh, you know, onto the show and bringing in a mid-card belt. However, I have another idea and I want to run this past you, Ro, and I will also want our listeners to let us know what they think. But in other news this week, there was a uh, rematch of Cody versus Magnus for the NWA title, uh, which Magnus won back, uh, or Nick Aldis, I should say. I, I, I don't think he goes by Magnus anymore. Nick Aldis is, is back being the £10 of gold champion. However, on that very same show, Impact's Willie Mack, well, I say Impact's Willie Mack, he's only appeared a couple of times, Willie Mack won the NWA national title uh, for all intents and purposes, a mid-card belt. Now, I think it was the national heavyweight title, sorry, uh, which would instantly differentiate it from the X Division. Now, bearing in mind... There is a, there's no NWA televised show. They feature their belts on other people's promotions. Also, the checkered history of Billy Corgan with TNA Impact. Now, don't forget, Billy Corgan had problems with the Dixie administration. This has nothing to do with Scott Damore, Don Callis, Anthem. There's, there's no beef, as far as I can tell, between those two, you know, and it, just to, to put that point over a little bit further, uh, you know, Impact are now talking to WWE. There's no beef there either. So my question is to you, bro, and to our listeners, A, would you like to see possibly the NWA national heavyweight title that Willie Mack currently holds be defended on Impact and be made a big deal and possibly a mid-card belt? And B, would you like to see Billy Corgan feature some of the, maybe the NWA stuff on 
the show and do you think it would ever happen um to answer your first question i don't have a problem with if they were going to go that route but i just think with that i think then nwa would have a lot of control over as far as how the matches go and then like just say for example you got will and mac champion and he's defending an impact and what if he faces someone like a moose or a killer cross and impacts like hey this would be good to put the belt on him or a are they gonna have the working relationship where cross or moose would appear on nwa to defend it or is it just going to be a thing where only, you know, certain people who are working NWA as well will be the ones that get to hold the title? I feel like it, can, it could it, it could work. Don't get me wrong. But then it could limit things as well, because I would think they want some control over, you know, how their champions booked on impact and et cetera. And then as far as your your other question, um, you know, the talent exchange, you know, I guess it's, it's the same thing. I don't see why not. I just think with with those things, you have to be very careful. And you think about most recently when we had the one with uh, Crash and uh, Noah. And, you know, that, that was fine. But you really have to be careful because they're going to want their stars to be spotlighted in, you know, in a positive uh, view. Whereas us, you know, we're going to want the same for our stars as well. So sometimes you, it could be uh, too many hands and, you know, trying to in creative, trying to control how their characters are booked on, you know, the other shows. So so that's a big fat no from you. then. Basically. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to waffle. I mean, I, I, you know, I have no problem with it. I think it's fine. It's just will everyone be on board and understand like, hey, look, you know, we're going to do the best we can, but sometimes, you know, your guy's going to lose on our show, just like our guy is going to lose on your show. It can't be, there can't be, there has to be that trust from both people. If, there, if that's there, then yeah, of course. Okay, so that leads us on to ratings then. And the reason why I want to move on to the ratings part of this now is that obviously um, the ratings have hit an all time low, which is no surprise with the time shift. Do you think bringing in someone like Billy Corgan? And the NWA could help with that impact jump. That's like that ratings jump. I think in it's funny, uh, Keith from uh, Clock Cleaners. We were talking about this uh, offline because he was giving me the over and under what I thought the ratings would be, um, 100k, and I gave the under. Now that I'm being negative, but I for the longest time I thought the relationship that Impact had with Pop was a good one, but. I feel in negotiations, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe that Impact probably were the ones that told Pop, hey, we don't want to renew or whatever, and Pop gave him that slot. So, <clears throat> excuse me, dang, I'm almost coughing on here. I apologize. Um, but I think at this point, there's nothing that's going to save the ratings. If anything, I think this is going to be a way to segue into becoming uh, going all digital. I, well, I hope I'm wrong. Obviously, I want them to have some type of television deal, and hopefully they're working on that currently. But even this week, like, I had problems watching because I normally would DVR, but now it airs, you know, at the time I normally would watch it DVR'd. So while watching it, you don't have the luxury of fast-forwarding through it. And then, you know, I work the next day, so I end up having to watch it on, you know, an, an app. So, and I think a lot of people might have to go that route where they're watching it on Fridays and they're watching it on an app. So you're not watching it when it airs. So that's obviously going to hurt. So I just think to answer your question at this point, I don't think anything is going to save it. I think they just kind of have to write it out. And then hopefully uh, 2019, you know, they're on another network or they have a brand new idea and they can just take off because you'd hate for this stuff not to be corrected leading up to the homecoming pay-per-view. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, we said this when we talked about it on the very first Adam Rose show, you know, when we talked about ratings, saying that it's it's irrelevant these days because people don't tend to watch live, you know, and, and it's, a, it's an unfair representation as well because people have these Nielsen boxes and then they multiply that by the population of how many people have these boxes. So it's not a true reflection, which is why I, I'm all for streaming service. I mean, you know, my wife and I, you know, we, we much rather watch things now on Amazon Prime or Netflix than actually watching on, on mainstream TV. Now, I know it doesn't bring in advertisers, but obviously these companies, they do pay for, for new programming. And, you know, ultimately it, it's about trying to keep the company alive. Do Here's a bigger question for you. Do you think that Anthem care? 
it's it's down to a hundred thousand. I mean, I'm guessing, yeah, just because you know you're putting all this money in production, and then you kind of just feel like, wow, you know, it it, it it's a sense of. Uh, you know, they probably don't feel like the stuff is validated in a sense. But then, too, I think they're looking at it as they when they look at their YouTube numbers or, you know, the other numbers, they see that the stuff is just being watched. It's just not being watched when it initially airs. The one thing that I think they should do, the two points of emphasis, and I know a lot of people are so big on, well, it's the channel that they're on. I think it's this. For them to be successful on a network, outside of marketing, too, because you know lord knows man they get on these networks that and I, and I think pop has done all right but a lot of times they don't do enough to market the uh impact like it don't remind people who might be watching that network that impact songs but the two points of emphasis for me it's time slot and day of the week that it airs i think they need to move to wednesdays just because i mean the only thing you're really going to be competing with is nba and nba really hasn't taken off just yet but Thursday for them is really a death slot, especially when it comes to fall, because with Thursday night football, and then even right now, you know, you got the MLB World Series, you have so much stuff going on, whereas Wednesday, it kind of is freed up. And then the time slot, obviously. I think if they can kind of get in between six to eight, that six to eight time slot, I think that will work perfect for them on a Wednesday. See, for me, I, I don't know what it's like over there in the US, but I would suggest a Saturday night. And I don't know if that's a, a dead slot in, in the US or whatever, but I'm just thinking that if they had a block of tapings around a pay-per-view, Saturday night, live episode of Impact. Sunday night, the pay-per-view. So they could build some su real surprise and intrigue on the Saturday night. Sunday night, go to the pay-per-view and then do the rest of the tapings afterwards. Now, the reason I say that is that at the moment, if you're going to do something like a surprise at a pay-per-view, but you've you've got the the taping, you know, the the impact episodes before, you can't put any surprises before the pay-per-view because you can't have the you know uh, a Thursday night live show then have the talent sit around for two days. So to me, what's a Saturday night like over there? Is that a dead slot as far as TV is concerned, or do you think that's just something that's that's too prime time? Uh, I think with Saturday nights, you're dealing with a lot of people who tend to go out. I mean, I can't speak for everybody. I mean, I, I I usually stay home from time to time, but you know, a lot of people go out because you figure people work during the week. So I think maybe a Saturday morning you might be able to pull that off. But then again, too, um, you know, I don't know. But I think that's what's going to be critical. It's going to be day of the week in the time slot. I think if they can get those out of the way, I think the channel will be fine. You know, for um, so many people who've been critical of pop, you know, I was looking back. I want to say, was it sometime March, April or so? But I remember us talking about it where they were creeping around almost 400K. And I know that that particular episode was probably, you know, a really, really uh, great episode. But I remember us talking about it where, like, if they can just flirt around 300K, they'll be fine. And then they were doing fine, dropping a little bit. Then all of a sudden, just seeing post slam reversary, things just went south. And, you know, you can, I've seen people be critical of the booking, you know, this and that. I've just been of the mindset they've been um, doing everything safe. There hasn't really been no surprises. But, yeah, I, I just think that the time slot and day, day of the week, Saturday, I just think Saturday night, I, I, I don't think... I think they'd be uh they might even do worse than what they're doing now at this moment. Fair enough. Yeah, just looking back at the ratings, March first episode, three hundred and sixty five, and then all the way up to uh April twenty sixth. That's a two months worth of every show was over three hundred bar one, which is April fifth at two hundred and ninety four. And then they even had one show that was just one thousand shy of of 400,000. So yeah, it, it was, um, and the thing was, the programming wasn't even that great back then. <laughs> you know, that was a real lull, that second period for me. Anyway, um, so the, the end of that first period, beginning of the second. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go back to my social experiment question uh, that I talked about in a second, then we'll get on to some final thoughts from yourself, Ro. But I talked about Billy Corgan a little while ago and the NWA, his time with Impact TNA. What, what, what did you, first of all, what did you, on reflection of Billy Corgan, did you like what he did and brought to the show when he was there? I really thought they were going to take off. Um, I was kind of one of these believers, <laughs> unfortunately. 
Um, it's funny you look back now, but I really saw underneath him they were the company was really going to thrive only because he was a name, you know, prominent name, obviously with his uh, successful musical career, uh, being the head man, front man for Smashing Pumpkins. But yeah, I, I thought he was going to do fine. Um, but then unfortunately, you know, we find out what he was really trying to do, and um, that's unfortunate. But I, I don't think anything negative of him. Um, Okay. Well, the reason I said it is that, you know, I can really see them working with Billy Corgan at some point. And it could just be featuring the NWA for a limited period, you know, to fill that gap, to to bring in not star power, but maybe some historical credibility. And also maybe to bring some viewers back with, with Billy Corgan coming back into the fold. So I'd really like to ask Billy Corgan about this. And he does interview from time to time, as do I, uh, although I'm the interviewer, not the interviewee. So the social experiment that I want to get is to get Billy Corgan on this show. Now, the one thing I've learned is quite often, you know, when you get interviews, it's because, you know, you go out there, you ask them, you talk to their agent, wherever it is. And, you know, I've done that dozens and dozens of times with, with, with wrestlers. But I actually want our listeners to get Billy Corgan on this show. And the way we're going to do that is, um, is to actually campaign for it on social media. Now, we've already got, you know, a couple of hundred people who follow me, a couple of hundred follow Row, you know, maybe a thousand or so follow BQ. I don't know. But what we're going to get going is a hashtag, get Billy on. So we're going to campaign to get Billy Corgan onto the show to talk about the NWA, his time with TNA Impact, and also to ask that question of, can we see them uh, working with them in the future? So if you haven't already followed us, just to remind you, it's RT Great underscore, is that right? RT Great underscore and V2 Adam IL on Twitter. So when you see our tweets, make sure that we're all hitting up Billy Corgan. Let's spam him on Twitter with get Billy on and we're going to get him on this show. That's my guarantee to you. <laughs> and if there's anything that you know about wrestling promoters, their guarantees are as good as their word. Yeah, okay, maybe not. But we are going to get Billy on at some point and we can only do it with your help. So that's my task for you this week before we, we kind of uh, finish up on our last thoughts get hashtag sorry hashtag get billy on all right so final bit of uh news from well i'll, I'll keep my final bit of news Ro, anything left from you that you want to cover this week yeah i just want to do some kind of fun um i want your five as well as the listeners um we've seen johnny impact his first successful impact world title defense against phoenix which was a great match too um who are some people you want to see johnny impact challenge i mean see Ch challenge Johnny Impact for the Impact World Championship. I'll just give my five in no order. Krilla Cross, Moose, Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan, and I guess this is reaching a little bit, but if he were to arrive, Chris Jericho. Now, you know, now before anyone might wonder why I didn't list Eli, Eli Drake would be the guy that I have take the belt from Johnny Impact. But I, those five those that I just listed, I just think those would not only be great matches for Johnny Impact and those participants, but I think it would help his title reign. What about you? What are some of your top five guys, dream, dream uh, uh, opponents? Okay, good question. Um, uh, well, I'm going to go with Jericho as well, because I think he could come in and really elevate Johnny Impact by just doing, you know, a, a, a set of tapings where he puts him over, uh, culminating in a pay-per-view. Although I think he'd most probably debut at Homecoming, or I, I'm not quite sure. Something would happen around Homecoming, I reckon. And, and he's the kind of person who wouldn't need the belt, but could, you know, solidify Johnny Impact. You're quite right about Eli. I'd like to see him take it off. So leaving the think about the rest of the roster and also anyone who, who might be out there. Um, I would like, I would go for both Santana and Ortiz. I know I've been very high on these guys before, but Ortiz has shown me something recently that, that makes me think that he's actually got a good character. And now these guys are a bit more of at a loose end. I think both of these, I think they could drop the tag title soon and then go on and do something. I know it's not quite finished with, with, uh, the OGs at the moment. It looks like they're kind of building that story, but I think at some point I'd like to see them. I'd also like to see Falabar get another shot at it. I mean, he went for Austin Aries. He's very close. I think that could be an interesting match. Austin Aries, sorry, not Austin Aries, uh, Johnny Impact versus um, Falabar in his second attempt at trying to get the title. So so they're the, the ones that jump out. Other than that, then we'd be going a bit 
more left field. He said about Killer Cross, I think that looks like the next feud anyway. Uh, do I want to see Moose? No, not really. Do I want to see Eddie Edwards? Most probably not either. So so other than that, I, I think I'm drawing a blank at this point. Uh, possibly Congo Kong. I'd go for maybe Congo Kong as a left field uh, to, to renew that feud, to get him coming back in and making a bit of a challenge. So I think they could build a, a main event program with Congo Kong as well. So any thoughts on mine before I finish on? On my last thought for the week. That would be a perfect one. Personally, they probably should have done that before Killer Cross. And I know we'll probably get into that. I just forgot that. That's. Um, I think that's something that's a bit announced. But, um, yeah, Kong and Kong would be ideal. Excellent. Right, well, my last bit of news is not really uh, TNA or Impact news. Uh, it, it's more WWE news, this one. But I think it is relevant to... To the you know what's been going on in wrestling generally, and that was the news that uh, Roman Reigns this week vacated the WWE belt uh, because he had leukemia. And what I want to talk about on this is, is just my own initial thoughts. Uh, is that there's been a lot of outpouring on social media about support for the guy, and absolutely he deserves it. But at the same time, I just I suppose want to reassure anyone who feels bad for booing him. That, you know. Lots of people in life face horrible diseases. Some of them pull through. I, I reckon Roman Reigns, you know, if anyone can pull through this, it'll be someone like Roman Reigns. But don't feel bad about having booed him for the last two years or whatever it is. You know, let's face it, he's out there to do a job, to entertain you and to get, well, cheered and booed. Uh, ironically, it's booed, but yeah, he's out there to perform. Just the same as James Elworth at Bound for Glory went out there. He knew he was going to get booed. So don't feel bad if it turns out that you know he gets knocked over by a bus or by the OGs tomorrow. Um, you don't feel bad about it. That's what these guys go out there. You know, they get paid a lot of money to go out there and receive it. They deserve your support, absolutely. But I suppose what I really wanted to get over is that people face the same thing that Roman Reigns has been facing for you know in every single day of life you know and and we put up we have to put up with it and absolutely everyone is right to come out and support him now but don't ever feel bad about your actions toward the wrestler um when they're they're fit and healthy so so that was my last one i hope he gets well soon i hope he comes back i know ro you're a huge fan and, and all i want to say is wrestling is wrestling it's a job like anything other don't feel bad about getting a reaction uh, you know treating wrestlers in a certain way yeah, if I bro, any thoughts on that? Yeah, let me just add it because I am a fan of his, and it's unfortunate. I just kind of just fi found myself. I know, you know, I, I expect him to uh, bounce back, but I just wonder if it comes, you know, if it's kind of a situation where you kind of realize maybe it's the potential end of his wrestling career. I must say, and for people who aren't fans of his, he's accomplished a lot. So I think if he were to retire, I mean. Pfft, multiple world champion um, i think he held almost every belt that company has so if this is the end of his career i mean for a good five or six years you know and you know you could argue some of the stuff being force fed or whatever um he's had a phenomenal career man so you know hopefully that's not the case like i said i enjoy watching him when i do watch over there but if that is if that seems like that's a viable option i don't see anything wrong with that yeah, so 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 there you go, guys. And uh, actually, there, there's one final thought on this, and it's only come to me I, I, as soon as we started talking about it. There is that um, I used to do a podcast with a guy. If you ever listen to the show, uh, his name was Gavin Duenas, um, real encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling, certainly WCW days, you know that kind of attitude era. And he was absolutely adamant at how he hated. Uh, the wrestlers wearing pink in favor of cancer, uh, which they tend to do on WWE. And he wasn't saying that he was on the side of cancer. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to joke about this, you know, but what he was saying is that heels shouldn't care about cancer and, uh, and, and any of these good causes. But, you know, they would change the ring ropes. They would, you know, every wrestler would come out and or do a, a make a wish foundation. And at the moment, you know, if Sammy Callahan was someone's Make a Wish Foundation, Sam he would he would swear now and say Sammy Callahan should go and make that kid's dream come true because that's breaking character. And now that I think about it, I, at the time I never used to get that, but now 
I do kind of get that. Now, don't get me wrong. You could have someone, you know, a heel character who could still support good causes. But I think that, let's face it, you know, you wouldn't get Hans Gruber in Die Hard suddenly, you know, look to the, the camera and say, oh, wait, by the way, you know, uh, go and support, you know, the Syrian refugees. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't do it. You know, and, and let's face it, wrestlers are actors. So on screen, I don't think they should be in support. But in real life, guys, Please, if you know anyone who is suffering or if you have got spare money, do all you can to, to fight this dreadful disease. Uh, any final thoughts, Ro? No, that's a nice way to close out, man. Okay. Until next week, folks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you hit subscribe. And as I said, get onto Twitter. Give Ro and I a follow. And if you see us uh, hassling Billy Corgan for an interview, get Billy on hashtag. Yep. Make sure you retweet it and get your own messages out there. Next week, we'll give you a report about the strength of social media. And if we actually are going to get Billy Corgan on, don't let me down now. Peace out guys.